Yo, welcome back everybody to another video. So today it's gonna be a fairly quick one. We're gonna learn how to take all of our database entries and push them and display them into a React app. So let's go ahead and get started. Alrighty, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to install a new React app. So to do that, all I'm gonna do is npx create dash react dash app and the name I want to give it, I'll just call it uh, display NBA players. Simple as that. Go ahead and press Y, let it do its magic. Perfect, so now that that's done, we're going to CD into the project and we need to install parse. So we'll do CD and do npm install parse. So fortunately, the way that parse works is that once we initialize it in the main app.js file right here, we don't need to initialize it anywhere else. It'll be available throughout the entire app. So the way that we're gonna initialize it, first we have to do import parse from parse slash dist slash parse dot min dot js. So ideally, when you do make this an actual project, you would wanna make sure your keys are secured. So we're gonna create a dot env file. So I'm gonna do touch dot env and it's gonna be created in the main directory of this app right here. And instead of here, I'm gonna give it the uh, first item, which is gonna be your application ID. So we'll do react underscore app underscore parse underscore app ID. And then after that, we're gonna do um, react underscore app underscore parse host URL. And finally, our JavaScript key. So react app parse javascript key is equal to that and the way that we find these keys if we click on this arrow we should go into the app settings and then security keys and all of our keys are right here so this is our application id go ahead and just copy and paste it into your app uh, the one that you have on your dashboard and then the javascript key goes at the very bottom and the actual host url we talked about this in the last tutorial but uh, that's just going to be https colon double slash parse api dot back for app dot com with the slash at the end go ahead and save that so ideally when you do make this an actual project you would want to make sure your keys are secured so we're going to create a dot env file so i'm going to do touch dot env and it's going to be created in the main directory of this app right here and inside of here i'm going to give it the uh, first item which is going to be your application id so i'll do react underscore app underscore parse underscore app ID and then after that we're going to do um, react underscore app underscore parse host URL and finally our JavaScript key so react app parse JavaScript key is equal to that and the way that we find these keys if we click on this arrow we should go into the app settings and then security keys and all of our keys are right here so this is our application id go ahead and just copy and paste it into your app uh, the one that you have on your dashboard and then the javascript key goes at the very bottom and the actual host url we talked about this in the last tutorial but uh, that's just going to be https colon double slash parse api dot back for app dot com with the slash at the end go ahead and save that all right, so now let's go ahead and actually create variables to import all of our um, .env variables that we just created. So at the very top of the file, I'm going to create three different uh, variables. Let me make this big screen. There we go. I'm going to create three different variables. One is called the application ID, which is equal to the app ID, host URL, host URL, JavaScript key, and JavaScript key. Awesome. So at the end of all of these, I'm going to go ahead and initialize parse. So the parse dot initialize and we're going to give it app underscore id and then we're going to give it javascript key and then finally we're going to do parse dot server url is equal to host url and that's it now we've gone ahead and actually initialized parse all righty so now that we've initialized it what we have to do is we can now pull the data from the database so the way that this would work is we have to first create a function. So the const, uh, let's call this function fetch all players is equal to async and make it into a function notation like so. And we're going to do const query is equal to new parse dot query 
dot NBA players. So basically what we're doing is we're telling uh, JavaScript, we're telling the React app that, hey, we want to set this variable query to equal a new parse query that we're going to do things inside of this table for NBA players. Uh, the table that we made earlier, let me try to make it a little bit smaller. This table right here, the NBA players table right here. Perfect. So after that, what we can do is then we can find or we can get all the information from it. So the nice thing about parse is that we can actually tell it that we want uh, certain players that are equal to, uh, giving all players that are equal to player name Michael Jordan or Steph Curry, or we can do get giving all the player names or which whatever we want, we're able to do a parse. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to get all of the players from that table. So what I'll do is const all players get is equal to await query dot find. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna go through the entire table of NBA players and it's gonna find all of them. And then what we have to do is all players dot for each. Now this for each function basically is going to render each NBA player from that row. So if I do console.log item, and then let's say if we just run this item, let's say we run this function just outside here. And if we go back into the app, we should see that we have a bunch of console logs coming up. Ideally, we would put this in use effect, which we will do here soon. But if I were to open one up, we are going to see that we have class name, so the table name, the ID, and uh, the object count of how many objects there are, as well as this thing called prototype. Don't worry about prototype. It's not. It's it's just all the different type of um, props that we can access. Um, but the most important thing is this attributes right here. This is what contains all of our data for each individual item. So this one has LeBron. Uh, this one should have, I think, let's see what it has. It has Shaq and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and actually access all those rows. So let's open up VS Code again. And the way that we're going to access all the rows, it's pretty simple. All we have to do is dot attributes. And then we should hopefully have all of them available to us. Let me go ahead and open it up again. And now we have all the players right there. So you can see that they're all, well, they're running a whole bunch of times, but we have all the information. We have player name, uh, the player points per game, and the player team. And that's pretty much all you really need to know of how to set up uh, a node API, how to push data into the Backfrap database, and how to pull it into a React app and if you did enjoy this video, be sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next one. We're going to be talking and we're going to be building upon uh, the React Native project that we're doing. So stay tuned and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.